and welcome to another Lawn Fawn video. Today we are introducing our stamp set Year 11 and its coordinating dies. So let's go ahead and check it out. This mini set has an adorable planet with a party hat and a party horn, and it has a little cute star for helping to set the scene, and then a really awesome sentiment. So we have, sorry I missed, your birthday, and of course you could use that on its own, but it's got an awesome plan to go with the planet, and it says, I didn't plan it that way, and <laughs> that always cracks me up so much. Now this set is the 11th in our series of year stamps. So we have year one all the way through year 12, and that's celebrating all of Lan Fawn's birthdays. Now, oh my goodness, we kind of forgot to come out with year 11 last year. So we're coming out with it during year 12. And that's why it is a belated birthday set because it was an oops. We also have that with year two, by the way. So I love that it's got this fun belated birthday theme, which makes for some really cute cards when you made just a little oops and forgot someone's birthday. So we've got a cute little turquoise planet and some red accents, and what I love about this set is you can color it in all sorts of different ways. Here we have the coordinating dies, which you can bend apart at the tabs or use your wire snips to separate. We're going to line it up with our stamped image, hold it in place with some low-tack tape, and then we'll run them through the die-cut machine and we'll have perfectly cut out images every time. And here you can see the cute images from the set. So the first card is going to be more of a simple card, and the second card is this really cool interactive card by Shari, so you definitely have to check that out. But first up, we're going to start off by creating a galaxy background. And I absolutely love creating these backgrounds. And my favorite way to do it is with watercolors. So I have some watercolor paper here, some watercolor cardstock, and then just some blue painter's tape that you can get at the hardware store. And I'm just taping that down to just a cheap plastic clipboard just to hold it in place so the paper doesn't warp while I add a bunch of water onto it. Now here I have some different watercolors and I'm dipping my paintbrush in some water and then adding some colors on to this watercolor paper. Now I like to use purples and blues and turquoises and reds when I do galaxies and the messier the better. I'm just doing like some big old blobs here and just being really messy and mixing my colors and making sure they overlap some. You'll see I'm doing some blues and now this kind of like maroony red color, some darker teals. And then I always like to include some bright colors like this bright almost greeny turquoise because the bright colors really help the galaxy kind of come to life. So you'll see it's really messy. It's kind of, every time I get to this point, I'm like, I don't know if this is going to turn out, but it's actually looking pretty cool. So here I'm going to take my heat tool and I'm just going to heat this whole thing up and dry it because I don't have the patience to wait for it to dry. So I'm going to dry it all. And then now I'm going to take black watercolor paint and put it over top. And this is the scariest part of creating a galaxy background because I'm always like, Again, wait, am I doing this right? But every time it turns out, no matter how you do it, and what's cool is every single one of these turns out different. Now here you can see I'm really watering down that black paint so that I can see the colors through it. And then I'm gonna take my heat tool and dry it, and you'll see as you dry it, it gets really, really light. Now, sometimes I do this part and sometimes I don't, but I wanted to add some more color. There wasn't enough color behind there. So I added a little bit more color and those same kind of splotchy things, I'm going to dry it and then I'm going to layer the black paint over it again. And you can keep layering and layering until you get a look that you like. Then I'll take the heat tool out again to dry that paint. Now I'm going to do one more little step because recently my beautiful friend Lynette gave me these really cool kind of like metallic watercolors and they're so pretty and there was a purple and a teal so I'm just doing some little streaks of that metallic and it's got this really pretty shine. You don't necessarily have to do this step to create a galaxy background but it's really really pretty and I really love them so thank you so much Lynette. So now I went ahead and just dried those metallic watercolors and now I'm going to peel up the painter's tape. I always love doing this because I think it just looks so cool as you peel up the paint and you can kind of see all all of your handiwork. Now, the trick to creating the galaxy sky, because you can see here it's still kind of in like hot mess status, is white paint. Now, I'm using something that's called Copic White, but white acrylic paint works too. I've just had this jar forever, so I just always use it. So I'm gonna take out that jar there, and then I'm just gonna take my water bottle here, my like little spray bottle, and just spray a little bit of water in there. And the trick to a really cool galaxy is a toothbrush. So I'm gonna take an old toothbrush here and just dip it right into this, like a little bit of wet watercolor paint. Then I'm flicking the like teeth of the toothbrush and it's creating these really cool splatters and I'm going all the way around. I'll create areas that are more concentrated with the white and kind of less so it kind of looks like the Milky Way. You know how there's like kind of like more concentrated stars and less concentrated. So I'm going in different areas. And then sometimes I do this part and sometimes I don't but today I, I was kind of in the mood to do this. I'm going to just pick up some of the paintbrush and tap the edge and get a bunch of cool little dots on there which almost are going to look like either bright 
brighter stars or like little planets or something in the background and it really kind of helps create the whole background. Now here we're going to take a stitched rectangle die and you can see how you can take the rectangle die and just keep moving around until you find your perfect place. And you'll notice that I created a much bigger galaxy than I needed. Once I'm creating one of those I like to create a big one and I save the rest of it for later because when you're making one it's kind of fun to make a nice big one. So now that we've got that stitched rectangle cut we're going to take out the year 12 stamp set and stamp color and die cut three planets. Then here we have some really cool holographic cardstock and we're going to layer that with a nice little border behind the galaxy and then we're going to take some black cardstock to be kind of like another little border. And this card is a recreation of a card by Mindy so thank you so much Mindy and you'll have to check out Mindy's card too because her galaxy is so gorgeous with these cool hints of yellow it's really pretty. So we're going to layer the galaxy on the holographic and then the holographic on the black cardstock and there's something about the holographic behind that galaxy that makes the whole thing just pop. Now for the sentiment we're going to be doing some white heat embossing on black cardstock because it kind of echoes the whole galaxy that we just created. So we're going to prep that with a anti-static powder tool and then stamp in some clear embossing ink and we're going to be stamping all three parts of this sentiment. We'll sprinkle on some white heat embossing powder and then we're going to heat it up with a heat tool and we'll have a nice bright white shiny sentiment. We're going to take the paper trimmer here and just trim these out almost so they look like those little old Dymo labels like we're going to trim right along the sentiment. And we're going to do that with all three parts of this sentiment. So this is the sorry I missed your birthday and I didn't plan it that way. So we'll sprinkle on the embossing powder, we'll heat it up with the heat tool, and then we're going to trim just right around those with the paper trimmer. Since this is a fairly simple card, we're going to be popping everything up, both the little sentiment strips and the planets. So we're going to use some of these cool little like foam strips for the back of these sentiment strips and it makes it really quick and easy to add foam to the back of these because they're nice and thin. And we'll just trim off any excess and layer it behind the three of them. Then we're going to start kind of planning out how it's going to look on the layout. We're going to put some foam squares behind that planet at the top and layer that on there first and then we can permanently adhere the sentiment once we know there's enough space. We'll add some foam squares behind the other planets and layer those onto this cool galaxy. And then the last step is to take a standard size card base at five and a half by four and a quarter and we're going to layer this card front on top. And now this card is all done. It's so super cute and fun. I love making those galaxy backgrounds. You can see how you can make a big sheet of them and create a bunch of cards like this, especially for all of the times you, oops, forgot someone's birthday. So this is so super cute. And next up, I am so excited for Shari to show you how to combine your level with another stamp set and create a cool interactive card. So take it away Shari! So for my card today I'm using the new Year 11 stamp set with that cute little party planet. I'm going to be using the planets and the astronaut and the rocket from out of this world. I've already stamped them out in jet black ink, colored them with my Copic markers, and used my coordinating dies to cut them out. So I'll just set those aside and now I'm going to work on the card and the background. So I have an A2 size piece of Blue Jay cardstock, two scallop circles, and two smaller circles, and a big button. Now I also have a circle that is slightly larger than the button size and I'm going to be cutting this out of the center of the scalloped circle. So what I'm making is a spinning card and this idea I saw from my friend Jennifer McGuire and I thought this would be really fun with the idea that I came up with for this card. So I'm starting out with my two scallop circles and I'm going to cut out that smaller circle that's the size of the button from the center of these. I'm going to layer them together and to get the circle mostly in the same spot on the scallop circles, I'm just using the first one I cut as a guide Popping that circle back in, it's held there with a little bit of removable adhesive. I can line that die up on my second scallop circle, pull that little inserted piece away, and then my circle I'm cutting out will be mostly in the same spot so that I can layer these two together and that inside circle lines up. So I'm using my liquid glue just to basically laminate these two together. And I had drawn a little arrow with my pencil so I could make sure I knew which side was up to get the scallops and the circle to line up. And now I'm going to do some inking on all of these blue pieces. So I'm using Distress Oxide Ink because it is a pigment ink and will sit on top of this colored cardstock. And I'm going to make my space background. 
So I'm starting out with that blue cardstock. That way I don't have to ink my entire piece. So this is like a really easy way to make a galaxy background. And I'm using Villainous Potion, which is this dark purple. And you can see how it sits on top of that cardstock and you get the blue and the purple together. And then I'm also going to use black soot to darken it up, especially on those edges, kind of blend those colors together a bit more. And there's really no rhyme or reason to how I did this. You can see I did basically three purple areas and I'm not concerned about the center because that's going to get covered up by my circle pieces. So I'm moving on and doing my inking to the scallop circle piece with the same sort of method with the purple villainous potion oxide and then I'll go in with the black soot. And then I'm also going to do the same thing to that solid circle, which is going to sit in the center of this spinner. Now I am going to add lots and lots of paint splatters to this and give it a lot of texture. And I'm starting out with some white watercolor paint to splatter over all of these pieces. This is really going to give it that galaxy look. And I always like to do more than one color with my splatters. So in addition to white, I also did black. And this has a really cool look right here, but I of course love some metallic splatters to look like stars. It really catches the light. So I'm adding some gold metallic splatters and then I'll also add some white metallic splatters. So with all these colors of splatters on the background, you get the depth and the texture, and it really gives a lot of interest to that background. So I'll set those aside, let them dry a little bit, and then I can start to assemble my card once all those paint areas are dry. So I'm starting out by putting that A2 size piece that's four and a quarter by five and a half onto a card base. And then I'm going to work on my circle. Now I decided I wanted a little bit of height so this wasn't flat on the card base. So I cut a few smaller circles, cut out that center piece. These don't have to line up perfectly, just the center part does. But I layered a couple of those on the back so it brought that circle up a little bit. And then the button I had was a bit shiny and I wanted to make sure that my glue really stuck so I just roughed it up with some sandpaper a little bit. I'm gluing that to my smaller circle. This is going to be my base that my scallop circle spins on. So I'll layer that over so that that button shows through the hole, add a little bit of glue and then put my solid circle on top. So that will cover up the button and then this scallop circle is free to spin underneath there. So you can see it moves and shifts slightly just because it's a little bit bigger the, than the button, but that also helps it to move a little bit better as it spins. And now I can add this whole piece to the center of my card. So now I have a full galaxy with that piece in the center that spins and it's kind of all camouflaged together because of all that inking and splattering. Now to add all my images, I've placed them where I want them to be. And I have some of these planets, the top and the bottom going off the sides, which I'll just trim off once I have them glued in place. And I'm just working my way around gluing all those planets to the card base first. Then I'm moving on to my three pieces that will spin, which is my astronaut, my rocket, and my party planet. And then finally in the center will go the sun. I did add one more planet at the bottom to kind of fill things in. And then I also had all those little stars. So I added those stars sort of sprinkled around so I have big stars to go with my splatters. And you can see I'm not really leaving room for a sentiment. I will put the sentiment on the inside. So for the sun, I wanted it to have a face and I pulled out the All the Clouds stamp set because there's some larger smiley faces in that set. And I'm adding a little smiley face to my sun. It's going to be the center of the card. I'm also adding a thin foam square to it so it will be popped up a little bit off that circle. And then I'll just center it up right in the middle. 
And now I can trim off those planets that overhang the sides. Clean that up a little bit on the edges. And you can see how the planet and the astronaut and the rocket are going to spin around my sun. Now to add more glitter to all my images, I glittered the stars. I glittered some parts of the planets like the rings or tracing the land masses on planet Earth there, traced around the sun, added a little bit of glitter to the details of my astronaut and my rocket. Now I really filled up the front of this and didn't really design a place for the sentiment and that's sort of on purpose. I decided on this one it would be on the inside. So I used Harold's ABCs to create a custom and sentiment that says another trip around the sun, which goes with the astronaut going around the sun. And then I can add happy birthday with offset sayings, happy birthday at the bottom. And then here is my finished card. I've tried to make a card like this before, but I never knew the button trick until I saw Jennifer's video. And that really inspired me to kind of give it another try. And it is very fun to sit here and spin this guy around the sun. And then of course you open it up and you kind of have that sentiment that matches the idea of another trip around the sun, which is another birthday gone by. This spinning card is so cool, Shari, and I just love your fun custom punny sentiment for the inside of your card, too. It's so fun to do those with alphabet sets. And next up, I wanted to show you how fun this set is with the platform pop-up. So you can see that same galaxy background with all of the platform pop-up pieces and create a really cool and adorable card. Now next up we have some beautiful cards by the design team and first up we have this stunning card by Callie. I love how she has that galaxy background kind of fading out into nothing. It looks so cool on this card. Here I love how Elena created a cool band with her galaxy background. It looks so fun and I love that she brought that heart constellation from upon a star into the card. Here is the card by Mindy that inspired us to make ours today and I love how she has those cool bright pops of color in her galaxy background. This card by Audrey is so much fun, and I love that she incorporated cloud stars and those cute balloons into this fun card. And this background by Elise is so pretty. I just love it, and the addition of the balloons is really fun. I can't wait to try that, too. I love how Karen used some die-cut letters, die-cut from her cool galaxy background on the card. It looks really amazing. And then here, Maureen created the coolest magic iris card. And as you pull that little tab down, you get the fun surprise of that little year 11 party planet there right in the middle. And then last but not least, we have another stunning card by Kara, and I love the background she created and those cool bright streaks across the sky. So we cannot wait to see all of those belated birthday cards you create with year 11, so make sure to share it with us. Thank you so much for watching today, and I hope you have an absolutely amazing day. Bye.